upcycle team squad members we're making the y7k hoodie today apologies if i'm a little high energy got super caffeinated for this but that's all good let's get started so this video would be good for pretty much sewing any hoodie but if you would like to sew the exact hoodie i am sewing the pdf is available on my website we got two sizes so excited to share this it has a wizard hood option as well as a round hood that is the original. I'm going to be getting that out of the way, and I'm going to show you how to lay out the pattern. This is how the pattern should be laid out. So we have rows of six, and each piece of paper should just be lined up flush. So that's the side to the side, the top to the bottom. They're not perfectly flush right now, but once I tape them together, they will be. And as for the A4 version, I had to kind of rotate these, but it is still laid out the same exact, and it is the same exact pattern. It's just a little bit different. I had to fit it on the A4 paper. Now grab yourself some tape and we are going to be taping all of these pieces together. A good strategy I use is just line up four corners perfectly flush, put one piece of tape and that'll connect all four. And you can do that for the whole piece before you cut it out. This is how we are looking. So I basically just taped the intersection point. You can tape as much as you would like, but this is all that is really necessary. And if your printer doesn't print to the very edge, it makes no difference. You're just gonna have to use your imagination a little bit and pretend that there's a line there. But if you're a part of the upcycle team, you have good imagination. As far as sizing goes, this is quite an oversized hoodie. But if you would like to do the smaller size, the smaller size is this inner line marked on the front piece. The front piece, the back piece, you're gonna be cutting on the inner and as well as the sleeve cutting on that inner line. And the only other piece is the waist, but it's just an inch shorter. Also where you see fold marked, these pieces are actually only half of what is gonna be cut in fabric. I'll explain better once I am cutting my fabric, but just note that the fold line is gonna be a fold along the fabric, and these are going to be double the size. Now I'm going to be cutting out the pattern to the edge of the black line. I'm gonna be doing the bigger size today. So like I said, if you wanna cut out the smaller size, just cut along this inner line on the front, back, sleeve, and waist. But I would recommend cutting out the larger size first, and then if you wanna trace that on other paper, then you can have the larger size, and then if you just wanna cut the smaller size, then you have both sizes. My pattern is fully cut out now, and I'm going to be starting with the back and the front main panels. If you would like to use the same fabric for the entire piece, I would recommend some fabric with a little bit of stretch for the wrist cuffs and the waist. I would recommend some ribbed knit for the wrist cuffs in the waist if you would like to do them the traditional way. I will be showing an alternative though. This is what the ribbed knit looks like. I steal this from hoodies that I cut up all the time. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be using stretch fabric and only this fabric for the entire piece. Starting with the front panel, as you can see, the fold is marked here. So I have my fabric doubled up and then it folds right along this edge. So we're only gonna be cutting around the outer and then the fold will stay together. My front panel is fully cut. As you can see, it's folded here. And before we remove this and unfold it, I'm going to cut a small little notch at the top here and a small little notch at the bottom here. Now this will just show us our center point on the bottom and the top, it's just nice to have. And we're gonna be doing that for pretty much all the pieces with fold. Now cutting the back panel in a quick note, you wanna have the stretch going sideways. You don't really want the stretch to be going up and down. So just feel the stretch on your fabric and make it going sideways. And make sure to have the side that says fold right up to the fold. And again, for the back panel as well, cut a small notch at the top and at the bottom. This is what the notches look like, just marking the center point. And our seam allowance is a half inch, so as long as it's less than a half inch, it won't show up. Now we are doing the sleeve, and as you can see, the fold line is up to the fold of the fabric, and we are going to need two of these. Now before I unfold my sleeve, I'm gonna do another little notch at the top and at the bottom. Unfolded, this is what it should look like. So we have that center point marked 
in the center point. Like I said, we need two sleeve pieces, so do the same exact thing for the next one. So for a single layer hood, you're gonna need two of the hood pieces. I typically do a double layer hood, has a bit more structure, I just think it looks better. So with that, you're gonna be doing four pieces of this hood. If you are doing the wizard hood though, you can put one of the straight sides up to a fold and then it'll be all the way together. But for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna be cutting out four separate pieces for a double layer hood. And I'm doubling up my fabric so I only have to cut this out twice. So if you are doing the wizard hood, like I said, one of the straight sides you could just put on the fold and then it'll already be connected there. All you'll have to do is sew the other side together. Two of my hood panels are cut out, and you can imagine we're gonna be sewing just along the square edge. This is the back of the hood, this is the front of the hood, but I'm doing a double layer, so I'm gonna need two more. Now moving on to our front pocket. The fold line is marked, and so the fold of my fabric is right there. We're only gonna need one of these, and it'll basically form a big triangle. Before unfolding your front pocket piece, just at the bottom here, we're gonna cut a little notch, not necessary to do at the top. That is how our front pocket piece is looking. Now all we need to do is the wrist cuffs and the waist. For the wrist cuff in the waist, just make sure the fabric is stretching long ways. On the waist piece, we have another fold line. So if you have enough fabric to just fold and then cut out one waist piece, do it. Otherwise, I don't actually have a long enough strip because this is an upcycled piece of fabric. It's just not quite enough. So what I'm going to do instead is just cut out two of these. Won't make a difference. If you have enough fabric to do the waist piece in one piece, so having a fold right here, I would recommend doing a slight little notch. Since mine is going to be in two pieces, the seam will just be the center point. And we are down to the wire. I live for this, but with the rest of this scrap, all I gotta do is cut out two wrist pieces. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out with what I have left, but if not, I'll just have to patchwork a little bit together. Then we get to the sewing machine. A quick note for the wrist in the waist piece. These pieces are made to use the same fabric as your hoodie, so that is assuming that they're not as stretchy as something like a ribbed knit. But if you do plan to use this, this is from a hoodie, I would recommend either shortening the wrist piece if you really want it to squeeze your wrist or literally put it around your wrist and get the right length to squeeze your wrist and then just cut out two of those and same for the waist because this stuff stretches a ton compared to typical fabric. We are onto the sewing now. For the first step, I've got my front pocket piece. All we are going to do is finish this edge and this edge either with a zigzag stitch or a serge. Once you finish that top edge, you're gonna fire up the iron and we are going to fold it over at a half inch along the entire pointy edge. Once your top edge is folded over at a half inch and only the top edge, because the sides and the bottom will all be in the seam, we are going to bring it to the machine and stitch this entire top edge at about a half inch, getting that folded edge locked in. This is how we are looking. So one long continuous stitch and that edge is now nicely stitched down. Now grab your front panel piece. That is the piece with the deeper neck. Now we are going to place our front pocket with the notch we made lining up to that notch on the front panel. You can also kind of line up this point to the notch in the neck. For the bigger size, it will line up perfectly to the seam. If you are doing a smaller size, line up that notch, and then just trim off the excess from the pocket. I pin the point in place and then put clips along the bottom of the pocket and the seam allowance for the entire project, as well as pretty much every single sewing project I do, is a half inch. That being said, for things that we are just stitching in place, we do that at a quarter inch. So starting here, we're going to stitch at a quarter inch along the whole bottom and then back up. That is just to keep it in place. And then once we sew the seams at a half inch, that original stitch will be hidden. So like I said, we are going to be stitching at a quarter inch, the side of the pocket, the entire bottom, and then the other side. And that is just to keep it in place. Once our pocket is stitched in place at the bottom, we are going to be sewing a triangle up here. 
I always eye this, but for the purposes of this video, I marked three inches. So I'm basically going to follow the edge and do a big triangle. And in the parts of the triangle that cross over at the top of the pocket opening, I recommend going back and forth a few times, add some extra strength to where it'll kind of be pulling on. I am starting lined up with that mark I made. I'm going to go straight across and then follow the edge to complete the triangle. And like I said, at the top of the pocket opening, I went back and forth a few times to make it a little stronger. After stitching your triangle at the top, your front pocket is complete. This is my original design, the triangular pocket. Super stoked on it. I just think it looks super swag to have a triangle as your pocket. Now you're going to grab your back panel and you're going to lay it on top of your front panel, good sides kissing, and you are gonna either clip or pin the shoulder seams, or if you don't wanna pin, don't pin. I typically don't actually pin on this step, but for visual purposes, this is how we are looking. So just the shoulder seam, and we are going to sew at a half inch. Make sure to serge or zigzag as well to finish it. And yeah, good sides are touching. Now that your shoulder seams are stitched and finished, we're actually going to open this up and we are going to be top stitching both shoulder seams, making sure the seam is going towards the back. So the less deep neckline. So you're gonna kind of pull it and then just top stitch a single line across on both sides. So like I said, we are top stitching with the seam going towards the back side, the less deep neckline. Both shoulder seams are now top stitched. Make sure you go back and forth at the start and the finish. That is a basic principle. You should be following when you sew pretty much anything. Now lay out your large panel like this and grab your sleeves. The long round part of the sleeve is going to be matching up with the armhole opening. And the reason we put that slit, that notch there is because at the point of that notch, that is going to go exactly where the fabric meets. So ready? Just like that. Now with the notch lined up to the shoulder seam, we are going to pin to the end of the armhole opening to the end of the sleeve. And obviously the piece is not gonna be able to lay flat like this when you pin it on. So just match up that edge and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all pinned up. Figured I'd break this down a little bit further. So this is the center point with the notch on the sleeve and also the shoulder seam. And I actually like to begin with this side I line it up to the bottom of the armhole. I'll put a clip, just making sure it lines up nicely. Put a clip and then kind of line this up as I go and make sure to even out if necessary. My first sleeve is attached via the clips and it can be a tad bit tricky because you're kind of putting two opposite curves together. Just make sure to line up the center point of the sleeve and the shoulder seam and then line up both bottoms of the armholes with the edge of the sleeve. I'm gonna show you one more time for the other side. All right, so here is the shoulder seam grabbing the round part of my sleeve where the notch is, going to line that up to where the fabric meets on the shoulder seam. And then we are gonna do this corner to that corner and the same for the other side. So this corner to that corner and then we can go along and pin these nicely, putting the edge to the edge. They should line up perfectly. Might take a little bit of maneuvering, but nothing too difficult. We are back at the sewing machine and we are going to be sewing both of the armholes the sleeve to the armhole at a half inch. After stitching the sleeve to the armhole on both sides, you're going to zigzag or serge the edge. So I'm just pressing that entire seam that we just sewed towards the sleeve away from the neck hole. It is an optional step and instead you could top stitch or you could do both. I just think the sleeve looks a lot nicer if you at least press the seam. With our hoodie inside out, we are going to now pin along the entire side. That'll be closing up the sleeve and the side. So we're gonna start at the bottom, put a clip or a pin, and then we're gonna line up the armhole seam, put a clip or a pin, 
and then also align the end of the sleeve. And now from there, you can put pins along the way if you would like, but we are basically going to be sewing along this entire edge. I added a few extra clips to help keep it in place. Now we are sewing along this entire edge on both sides at a half inch. And I usually start at the bottom here and go finishing at the end of the sleeve because it's just easier to keep the seam going this way. So like I said, sewing at a half inch along this entire edge, finishing at the end of the sleeve. Once both of your underarm seams are fully sewn up, we're going to start preparing the hood. So like I said, I'm going to be doing a two layer hood. So that includes four of the hood pieces. If you are doing a one layer hood, you're gonna follow this step and I'll show you where it's a little different. For our first step, we are gonna be sewing just the square part, leaving this part open. So this is the back of the hood, this is the front of the hood, this is the front opening, then this is the back. So at a half inch, we're going to sew along that edge and the same for the other piece. And obviously, if you are just doing a single layer, just do it for your one. All right, so now you can see I stitched that back part of our hood. And if you had the round hood, you're doing the same exact thing but you're just following that curve instead of this square shape. Now, I didn't finish the seam with a serge because I'm doing a double layer hood, but if you're doing a single layer, I would recommend either serging or zigzagging that seam. If you are doing a single layer hood, remember the part that is raised up is the back, this is the front. All you're going to do is finish this entire edge and then you're gonna fold the entire thing over at a half inch. And then this piece will be ready to put onto the hoodie. Another quick step for the pointed hood, if you would like it to be extra pointy, <laughs> um, you can trim off this corner and that'll just allow the corner to come out fully. Do make sure to leave at least about an eighth of an inch. For the double layered hood, we are gonna be taking one side, flipping it to the right side and then putting it inside of the other side. Now with our one side in the other side, making sure that the right sides are together so you can see both of the seams and the good sides are touching. Now we are going to clip along this entire side and that will be the front opening of the hood. So I have clipped this front opening together along the whole thing, and now I'm going to sew at a half inch. Now that our front opening is sewn together, we can flip this piece open and see our hood, our clean double layered hood come together. Now the final step before we put our hood on is that front hood opening as you can see. So if we lay it like this, this is the front and then the back comes up. This front opening, we are going to top stitch around. Before we top stitch around the entire front opening, I'm going to make sure that the seam is pulled out all the way and I'm going to clip along the entire thing. My entire front opening is now clipped. I used a ton of clips just to make sure I really got this seam pulled out as much as possible. And after doing it, I realized I could have probably used the iron, but this worked totally fine. Now, for the entire front opening, I'm going to top stitch at a half inch. Once you have top stitched that entire front opening, this hood is ready to put on. Looking at our main piece, we have it to the right side so you can see the front pocket. We are going to turn it so we see the back side. And then this notch, you are going to be lining this back seam of the hood up to this notch. So this is the front opening of the hood. And then this is the back seam that we're talking about that we're going to line up to the notch. And on this back seam, a quick pro tip, put one seam going one way, one seam going the other way, make sure that the stitches align, and then there's some less bulk. So we are looking at the good side of the hoodie body and the good side of the hood. We're taking that back seam and we're putting it right up to this notch. And then we are going to be pinning this bottom raw edge 
along the whole neckline. If you're doing the double layer hood, just make sure to get both layers. And like I said, we're just following that neckline and eventually we'll come around and the hood will intersect right over that front notch that we made. So again, that back seam of the hood is lined up to the back notch and we are just following the neckline all the way around and it will intersect at the front. Now with your hood fully pinned on, you're going to sew around the neckline at a half inch. I usually start at where the front intersects. Make sure to finish this edge as well. Once you finish that edge, you can flip your hood and there you are. Now I typically as well will top stitch the entire neckline. I think it always looks better, but that step is optional. And for top stitching the hood, make sure that you're top stitching with the seam going towards the back panel, not towards the hood. And I always start at the back because then once the hood is down, you won't see where you started and stopped. There we go. I top stitched the hood in place. God, I think the wizard hood looks so fire. Okay, but now final steps. All we're doing is the wrist cuffs and the waist. So before we sew the wrist cuffs and the waist, if you wanted to just literally fold the sleeve edge over, fold the waist edge over, you could call it a day. Your hoodie would be clean. But if you do like that kind of cinch look, this is for you. Alrighty, so first things first, for the waistband and the wrist cuffs, you're just gonna fold it in half. So we make them one piece, sewing that at a quarter inch, as well as the waistband piece. And if yours is one piece, you'll have the notch to mark the halfway point. But since I didn't have enough, I my seam will be my halfway point. And this is the only seam we are sewing at a quarter inch. But yeah, like I said, so we're doing both of the wrist cuffs closed and as well as the waistband. Now that your waistband is one big circle, as well as your wrist cuffs, you are gonna actually be folding it in half. Now you can see it kind of forms that wrist cuff, doing the same thing with the waistband piece, and we are going to be pressing that with the iron. All right, with everything now folded in half, as you can see, we're gonna start with the wrist cuffs, these can be a little bit tricky if your fabric isn't super stretchy, but also, like I said previously, if you decide to use the rib knit for the waist or the wrist cuffs or both, it is a piece of cake because that stretches so much. We are looking at the right side of the sleeve. We've got a wrist cuff. We're gonna line up this seam with that seam, just kind of fitting it around. And then we're gonna pin in place those seams together. With those seams pinned together, you're now gonna stretch that sleeve opening until it is not bunched up anymore. Grab it on that other halfway point and put a pin. Make sure to do this to both sides and with the pins in place, you can kind of see it'll fold out and we'll have a nice clean wrist cuff. As for the sewing, we're sewing at a half inch starting where the seams lined up and you just want to stretch so the sleeve opening lays nice and flat on the sleeve cuff and go around the whole thing. This part can be kind of tricky, just make sure to go slow and really stretch so that sleeve opening is laying nice and flat on the sleeve cuff. Make sure to finish this edge with a serge and then do it to the other side. Clean wrist cuffs. You can also top stitch this edge if you would like to, but I'm not going to. For the waistband, we are doing pretty much the same exact thing. So you either have a seam on one side and a notch on one side, or you have two seams like I do. So those are good halfway points. And you're just gonna mark in the middle again so we have another reference point. So I'm just folding it in half and I'm gonna mark halfway. Same idea, but we have four marking points. So we're going to put one of the marked points to the side seam, one to the front notch, one to the other side seam, and then one to the back notch. All right, so yeah, like I said, same idea. We're putting those raw edges together at each marking point. I typically will put the seam of the waistband to the side seams and go all the way around. All right, so we are pinned on and same idea. We're just gonna be stretching as we sew, making sure that is laying flat nicely. And we are gonna go around the entire bottom edge straight stitch and finish the edge with a zigzag or a serge. 
Alrighty, folks, once your waistband is in and finished, you are finished. All I'm gonna do is kind of press some of the seams to make it look extra nice. But if you made it this far in the video, congrats! I am beyond stoked with how this one came out. And hopefully, if you made it this far in the video, you're stoked as well. Thank you for supporting me. I genuinely love you. I am on a mission to destroy fast fashion with a passion for slow fashion. My name is Win. Win Unlimited. You ask me, this hoodie looks like it was made in a factory, except for this factory has good vibes.